welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I'm Sheila and we are Aging Joyfully and one of our quadrants is called social. Social means so many things. It's the people we interact with all over the place. Your family, your friends, business, workers, strangers, um, serving others is a social. There's so many things and some of us are really good at it and some of us struggle with that and some of us really just choose not to do it. And I just want to talk about a couple things that have helped me in this category and why I needed help, where I started from, and kind of a little bit of my journey to where I am now. So for starters, I was, I am, I'm an only child raised by a single mother. I didn't really know my dad. And then he passed when I was about 20 three, 24 years old. And that was that. And I'm not feeling sorry for myself. I just think it, you need a really clear picture of your life to understand the biggest, the biggest person that you need to understand is yourself. We really need to understand ourselves, where we came from, who we are, where we're going, what our identity is, and why does that matter? And it took me a while when I was younger. It took me a good while because I was kind of alone in the world. And I just had to speak with my Heavenly Father, but I even had to find Him along the path. And I just was alone a lot. And I just had to figure out so much by myself. And I kind of thought as I went through some of my young adult life, I thought I was maybe kind of broken because I seemed really outgoing and confident and positive on the outside. And then on the inside, I was really unsure, insecure, nervous, scared, trying, struggling. Um, I think some of you might understand that feeling. So it took me a long time and it really wasn't until about 15 years ago when I hit about 40 that a friend introduced me. Well, first I just want to say, when I would go to church, when I would meet new people, and I've been doing hair since I was like 25 years old, okay? So I've had to interact with people for a long time. And, and I used to think I was broken because I just was like, turn your head, Sheila, look away, keep your eyes down. If no one looks at you, you don't have to look at them. No one, if you don't make eye contact, eye contact with anybody, they won't make eye contact with you. You can kind of skate through life and not really be noticed. And that was really good for me. I did not want to be noticed. I'm really happy in the background. I'm a hard worker and I'm capable, but just give me a project. Let me do it in the background. Let me not have to be in the front, in the foreground, a leader, any of that. I don't need that. And I thought I was kind of broken. I thought that is just, you are pathetic, Sheila. And that is just how you are. And you're kind of just broken. And I kind of just skated through life, doing my best, doing my best, but definitely just getting through life and not having a ton of people in my inner circle and focusing on my families, not being happy in my marriage, which is another story, but really trying to figure out who I was. So. Coming back, um, one of my good friends introduced me to this. Have you seen this before? Those of you that are my age, um, you've probably seen this before because this came out in the 80s. And, um, and it's a personality test, basically. And it changed my life. So I wanted to start with this with social because it's so, so, so important for you to understand what makes you tick, why you are the way you are, good, bad, or ugly, how some of your positives and some of your negatives, how you fix it, um, how you work on it, how you accept it, how you just kind of accept who you are and what your driving force is. So I just want to read this little half paragraph from the author. So he talks about how he was in California um, with his wife and four kids, loving life, doing great and got in a car accident. And um, 
he for last he had a thriving practice. He's like a psychologist, counselor, had a thriving practice, everything was great, and then he got in this car accident and he lost his memory, lost his clients, lost his will to live, lost so much of himself for a while. And then he talks, so then he started getting better, coming back. And he realized he has his kids. It looked like he has four daughters. He has two red daughters, because here's the colors, red, yellow, blue, and white. Red, blue, yellow, white. Those are your color options, okay? Um, and he has kids at each one of those areas. So he says, we are all, see, we all have a personality and a character. It is not determined at birth what we will do with either of them. Unfortunately, many people simply grow old rather than ever growing up. That hit me. Some of us just grow old and we never grow up. Do you know people like that? Is that you? Um, he says, this is your opportunity to understand the difference. It is my hope that the color code will be your guide to understanding and appreciating various personality types. Using the color coded system described in the following chapters, you will learn how to improve your relationships including the most important relationship of all, your relationship with yourself. That was exactly what I needed about 15 years ago. Now, since then, there's a million personality tests out there you can take, a million different ones. This is the one that I've just stuck with. It's pretty simple. It works for me. It makes sense for me. And it's just easy. So this is what I stick with, which is why I'm introducing it to you today. If you haven't already been introduced to it, I suggest you find something like this, if not this one, that works for you because it makes us make sense to ourselves. So in the beginning of this book, and you can find this online as well, there's a test. They give you, um, let's see, if I show you better, they, they have a test of things you fill out. And you need to fill it out to the best of your knowledge, like when you were the youngest you can possibly remember yourself. Fill this out and it will tell you, and the, the one online is free and then there's a paid one that gets really, really deep. So I just did the free one, I just did the one in the book and, um, and it tells you what your driving force is. Your driving force. So red driving force, I have some red friends and um, I'm not as comfortable with the first what driving force of red. That's the only one I struggle with. Um, blue people, the blue color code blue. If you're, if you're driving, if you're blue, your driving force is pleasing everybody, making sure you're good, that you're doing the right thing, that you're pleasing and making everybody happy. You don't want to step a toe out of line. You are a blue driven person. Okay. I'm not blue. <laughs> I'm not blue. Um, red, you're kind of more in charge, like large and in charge and your way is the right way and everybody else's way is the wrong way. And you know that you're awesome and you want to do it your way. And it doesn't matter what anyone else says. You're going to be a business owner. You're going to be a lawyer. You're going to, you know, one of those people that works and works and works and gets everything great. Okay. That's a red personality. Yellow personalities, oh, yellow personalities just want to have fun. Their driving force is fun, 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 good times all around. They want to make sure everybody else is having fun. They want to make sure they're having a good time at all times. Um, responsibilities, push, who needs responsibilities? Yellow people are just really, really driven by fun. They need to be surrounded by people. They want to um, just have a good time no matter what. And then white people, which is me, we are peace driven. Think about that. Peace driven. I'm not antisocial. I'm not unapproachable. I'm not able to communicate with people, but I really want peace in my life. And that can constitute stepping back from other people. That can constitute putting your head down and walking away. That can constitute don't look at me because I'm just over here doing my thing. And that changed my life. I'm not kidding you. Changed my life. My friend who introduced this to me is a red, a red, a red, a red. And we were listening to the audiobook actually in her car driving one day. And the, the author narrates the audio. 
and we were laughing because the things he would say, it's like, oh my heck, that's you girl. And then, oh my heck, that's me. And it was hilarious. And we were having so much fun listening to that stinking audiobook. And it just, I went, wow, I'm not broken. I'm just white. I'm just white. Like I am still very capable, but I just like to do it in the background. And then here I am though, doing a YouTube channel, trying to gather what I've learned since then and share it with you. So yellow or white has good qualities and we have bad qualities. Blue has good qualities and bad qualities. Yellow and red, same. So the goal of this book is to understand what drives you, who you are, help it make sense, right? And then improve, improve. And he gives you guidance on how to improve, how you kind of negate the negative, build the positive, take positive from the other colors, try and incorporate them into you. And just seeing that, just seeing that, just being like, oh, okay. So blue people really like to please other people. And that can be a detriment because you can get walked on. But I have a blue daughter and she's just so loving. She's just so loving. So, she was so obedient, just such a good kid. She always wanted to please. And she has some really great qualities. But then she had to learn not to be a doormat with her, with her first husband. And she has now moved on and doing much better. So there's so there's all the good qualities and then some of the bad. And the goal is to work through those. Is that genius or what? Uh, it changed my life. I was like, okay, Sheila, you're not broken. You're just white. You're good being in the background. You're good doing whatever project someone needs help with, but you just do it in the background. And my red friend has helped me learn to be more of a leader to be able to be in front of people as well, be able to um, get on a video or talk to my clients or whatever, and to try and incorporate the blue, which is caring for people and pleasing them and making them feel comfortable and making them feel good. And then a little yellow where we have fun. So one of the biggest things that taught me besides myself it taught me how each of my kids are different. So like I said, I have a blue daughter. She's definitely driven to please. She's driven to get along. She's driven to not rock the boat, to do what you say. Um, she feels what you feel. She's very um, empathetic. She feels what even a stranger feels. She feels that. And she has a baby now. He's just five months old. And even his pain is her pain, right? When he cries, she cries. When he's sad or sick, she's sad. Um, and that is truly how she works. And we all want a little more of that. It would be great for us to all have a little bit more empathy for other people. I do love other people. And you'll find out in the color code, like your driving force and then what your next, you know. So I'm kind of white with blue. That's kind of where I'm at. So I do love other people. I love my clients. Like I love the potential of you guys. Like I love helping people. I want the world to be a better place. I want people, especially as we age, to find joy in their life. Like that's what I'm doing all this for. And um, sharing some of the knowledge I've learned over the years that has helped me. And I just don't think it's ever too late. I think that I don't care what age you are. If you can come to, a, to terms and to a recognition of who you are, besides being a child of God, which really, really helps, you get to your innate character that you're born with. And any of you who've had kids, you know those kids come the way they are. Both of my daughters, polar opposite. So my other daughter that I have is a white and a red. She likes to be right all the time. She can't be wrong. She hates being wrong. She's very capable. She's strong. She can do anything she sets her mind to. She's very red and driven in those things that she wants to do. But she's very white at the same time where she's just like, hey, I'm going to be in my room doing my thing without any of anybody else. And she's very happy doing that. So learning about those that you interact with. What are they driven? So you can look at them better because sometimes, most of the time, 
we deal with other people the way we want to be dealt with. Say that again. We deal with other people in a way that makes sense to us and how we want to be dealt with. But that does not work for everybody. A blue person needs much more love, much more attention, much more um, compassion and praise and letting them know they're just doing a great job and that you love them. Like they need more of that just naturally. But you don't want that to get too whiny. And there's nothing wrong if you have a child that's really blue to try and teach them some white qualities or some red qualities as well. To be like, okay, I've, I've patted your back. I've given you all the strength you need. Now you're going to have to pick yourself up and, and take care of yourself a little bit too. Like there's nothing wrong with um, incorporating these other colors in people's lives. And it's kind of our place, especially as parents, to do that. But it's also our place when just dealing with other people. We don't really want to correct them, but we need to know what their driving force is. Um, in the salon industry, working with other people, everybody's different and you, you get to learn how to talk to other people because they react differently. Um, if you're in any kind of a job where you work with other people, you need to understand what their driving force is so that you can give them the things that they need in a way that makes sense to them. But learning first and foremost who you are is so huge. So huge. It's hard to even get through this life without that knowledge, I think, because I struggled with it up until I was 40 years old, like really just wrapping mind around my, my mind around what was, what was wrong with me. Um, I had kind of RBF, like one of my friends that I met when I moved, when my kids were little, she said, and I'm okay with this. She said, you know, you're really unapproachable. You know, you have this look on your face that so you don't want people to approach you. But when I get to, got to know you, you're really nice. And that stuck with me in a good way. It didn't hurt my feelings. So I'm like, yeah, you're right. I put up a wall like, don't talk to me. I'm walking by. Don't look at me. I do. I absolutely do. I knew it, but I didn't know why. And it really helped me to understand what my driving force is, what makes me tick, and why I do that. I'm not broken. I'm just really good being in the background. I'm just really good. Like, don't look at me. Don't look at me. Or don't, don't make eye contact. I'm just really good at that. But now, because I've worked on it for so long, I'm kind of the opposite. I lead, I lead the music and I, I lead the choir in my church. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing, but I just do it. And now I love it with my whole soul. I love all these people around me. I understand that they have needs and maybe I can fill some of those needs. Maybe when you just say hi to people, how are you? You look so cute today. Or wow, I haven't seen you for a minute. You look so good. Or, I mean, so many little things that we can do that would change other people's lives. On a different path, same but different path, it's really easy for us and it would be really easy on one hand for me to be this a victim mentality. Like, oh, poor me. I'm just an only child. I've struggled for so long. I had to go through some hard times. Like, I could have ended up one of those people that just lived off welfare or something. And I refused to. I refused to. I'm going to work hard. I'm going to make something in my life. I refuse to be a victim. And that has followed me for a long time. But you do get a lot of people that you come across that really live in that pocket of victimhood. And it's good to help them if you can with just compassion and love, but try and help them, especially if they're related to you, try and help them get out of that pocket. Don't fall into the victimhood yourself. It's so easy to do. It's so easy when life is hard to just give up, I can't do it anymore. I don't even know why I try. Nothing ever works out. Um, it's so easy to do. And we are all, especially in this day and age, we're all going through something. The more I talk to people, um, I kind of have a wayward son who I love. Um, he's doing his own thing and has, doesn't have much to do with me. And that's okay. I love him and he, 
Um, he, I'm here. I'm here if he needs me. Um, but I'm definitely not going to just be used um, or walked on. And I'm hoping that he will learn from some of that. I'm hoping that he will climb out of some of that victimhood himself. But we all see it. And I could just be like, oh, my life sucks. This is so hard. Poor me. Because life can be hard. But we don't want to be that way. We want to find the joy. And that's why we not, we not, that phrase, some of us just grow old instead of growing up. Okay. We want to grow up. We want to learn. We want to improve. We want to do better. So I challenge you to read this book, take the test, see who you are, or find any other. There's much, This is an 86, I think. There's many, many other more in-depth, detailed personality quizzes out there that you can take free online. Just um, Google it, YouTube it, see some personality tests and take them and see where you are and see what it means. It will outline what it means. If you're a 9.13, like I know that's a, a numbers thing is now kind of a new um, personality test that people use a lot. It means something. If you're a 9.13, a 9, a 1, and a 3 all mean something. Um, and it's just super interesting to learn more about yourself and to be able to handle the people around you, handle yourself, improve yourself, be a good example, find the joy in living, find the light, find the reasons, and put that smile back on your face because you finally get it. Um, I have to throw in though, like you're a child of God, you need to say your prayers you need to ask him to be in your life because he won't force himself in. You do have to ask. You have to knock on that door and he will open it and he'll happily be there for you. And he really does take the heavy, heavy things and make them lighter. He helps us get through the hard times. Um, but we have to do our part. And that's where I think figuring out who you are personality-wise is such a fun thing and such a comforting thing and is life-changing. If you give it a good old college try, give it a shot, really put some effort into it. It is, it's fun and it makes so much sense and it really just helps. So there's my first social challenge for you is to take some sort of personality test because we're going to dig in to things we can do socially to make our lives better, other people's lives better, um, make ourselves happier and get through this life with more joy. And social is just a big part of that. So take the time, focus on yourself, learn some things, and we will be back with another social challenge week two of next month. Uh, social is going to be the second week of every month. So week two of next month, that gives you 30 days to commit to some sort of personality test to learning a little bit about yourself and feeling a little bit better about why you are the way you are um, and what you can do about it. This one, especially, like it gives you tips. It tells you what to do. Here's your problem. Here's the way you could think about fixing that. Here's the good. Here's the bad. Why don't you work on this? This gives you some tips and pointers that are great. I mean, I'm sure the other ones do too, but do something in the personality testing realm. It will change your life. And I'll see you next month.